it's time. We uh, come to you live here each Wednesday. And as you can see, I'm with uh, just a very special guest today, Patricia Cota Robles. Uh, and I'm going to give her a proper introduction here in a second. But thank you for joining me, Patricia. Great uh, to have you with me. Well, thank you, Steve. It's wonderful to be here. All right. And we, um, so these, this is a live program. So a shout out to all of the Era of Peace folks uh, and Patricia Cota Robles, uh, all of the, the friends, partners uh, on her channel uh, out on social media, all of our Humanities team, Humanities Stream Plus members, a uh, big shout out to you. And then John Raymer and the Sign Network and all of the uh, channels that are coming in to social media via Sign Network. Big shout out to you. Thank you for being here. Again, we've got a really great hour in store for you. Uh, now, it's a live program, so I just want to share as we get started, I want to invite you to put in the chat there on social media questions and comments that you have. I've got a big uh, screen here in our studio here in Boulder. And uh, these, these comments are brought back to me, these questions. And the earlier that you come in, the better chance that I have of bringing them to Patricia during the hour. So uh, make sure to avail yourself of that. It's pretty cool to be able to, from wherever you are in the world, you can, you can talk to Patricia here. Okay, so now our theme today is partnering with universal beings and cosmic forces, creating a whole new future. Uh, so that's, that's a pretty big theme, isn't it? Uh, so we're gonna, we're gonna illuminate you know, what, what we mean by that. Uh, let me first give Patricia a proper introduction. Patricia Cota Robles is an internationally known spiritual teacher sharing messages from the beings of light in the realms of illumined truth. She is also co-founder and president of the nonprofit educational organization, Era of Peace, and the annual World Congress of Illumination, now in its 36th year. The divine intent of the beings of light in the realms of illumined truth is to give humanity encouragement, greater clarity, and understanding as we progress through these wondrous but often challenging times. Today, Patricia is joining me in part to discuss her exciting brand new free program uh, called Partnering with Universal Beings and a also brand new masterclass called Cosmic Forces Shaping a Whole New Future. These were co-created with fellow spiritual teacher Suzanne Giesman and Humanities team. And uh, so again, welcome Patricia. Uh, really looking forward to talking about all of this with you. Thank you, I am too. And Patricia's coming to you live here too. I said I'm coming from Boulder, Colorado. Patricia, where are you coming in from? I'm coming from Tucson, Arizona. All right, Tucson, Arizona. Boy, and we're in September, so we've got the really nice months uh, directly ahead down there. Uh, so lucky you. Yes, yeah, it's starting, <laughs> starting to cool off a little bit. <laughs> right. Good, good. Well, so let's, um, we were just chatting, actually, Patricia and I, before we came on the air here, and uh, I was sharing with her, you know, 30, the, the, I mentioned the 36th year of this World Congress on Illumination. So that's going way back uh, to early times, you know, when we talk about the, this great shift, this pivot, this grand awakening that's going on. And so um, it, what we're gonna do is just back all the way up. I wanna ask Patricia kind of, what was that like? She was a, you, she was a, uh, uh, a counselor uh, for a family therapist before, and then she felt this calling to do the work that she was doing. And then she connected with these beings of light back, you know, back, I guess, in the 80s. Uh, so, Patricia, could you just share how did that happen and then unfold into all of what's going on now with Era of Peace, all of who you've become? Well, the, the reality is, is that all my life I've had this question. I was raised like probably 99% of the people in a rather challenging what would be referred to as dysfunctional family <laughs> when I was little. And in the midst of everything that was going on, I just knew in my heart that this is not the way life was supposed to be on earth. And so I knew also somehow that if I kept asking questions, I was going to get answers to that. That was a knowing that I brought in with me. And that took me you know, through the gamut of world religions and through psychology and the scientific fields and powers of the mind and all of those things as I studied all along. And I became aware that there's this unifying thread of truth running through everything that indicates what 
we talk about the law of attraction that whatever we're sending out with our thoughts, words, actions, and feelings is at some level returning to us. And whether we were talking about religion, you know, the law of cause and effect or karma or reaping what we sow or an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth or casting our bread upon the water to have it returned to us or science talking about action and reaction, radiation and magnetization, you know, all of the like attract like uh, consciousness that's out there. Uh, my question was, if every form of knowledge, both spiritual and academic is telling us that we've created our own realities and that we're in the mess we're in because of how we've used our gift of life, why in the world are we still in that mess? You know, so I'd, when I spoke to religious leaders, they'd say, well, predominantly that it was because Eve ate that apple. And when I talked to the scientific community, they'd say, well, that matter evolves out of chaos by happenstance. And we just evolved from an amoeba in a mud puddle by chance, you know, and that what is just is. Well, none of that seemed real to me. So I then started wondering what does it mean when it says seek ye first the kingdom of heaven within and all else will be revealed to you so i began that process and gradually through that process i started receiving that inner guidance and raised up in consciousness and then really connecting with the beings that i was familiar with i always had an affinity for Jesus and for Mother Mary and for Archangel Michael and those beings of light. So those are the ones that began responding to me. And then when I connected and responded to them, literally the floodgates of heaven opened because we're not limited when we can connect with the beings of light. And so I initially just re felt that this was my own personal guidance and response to my answers. And they were giving me all of this wondrous information. And then I had this epiphany that this was not special, that I was not uh, being specially or gifted with this knowledge, even though it was a major gift in my life, but that this was normal and that this is what we were always supposed to do. And as the teachings say, as above, so below, we're not supposed to learn all the knowledge in the physical planes and all the academic and science and things through trial and error. We have teachers and professors and people that have gone before us that teach us. And that also is true with the company of heaven. And that's who these beings are. And they're not necessarily in our loved ones, things have shifted a lot and our because our vibrations have raised, our loved ones are really tangibly available to us, but they're not often in this higher realm of the spiritual hierarchy or the ascended masters or the cosmic and galactic beings who have moved far higher in connecting with unity consciousness with the source of all that is. So in my own path, I always requested and asked that the information I was receiving only come from the highest realms of illumined truth because I didn't want anything that I was sharing to be misinformation. And I've always said that about everything that I'm sharing too, that we don't ever want, I don't ever teach anything that I haven't proved to myself to be true in some way or another but I don't ever want anybody to accept that as truth just because I've told them it's so. Because no matter how much you love somebody, no matter how clear you think they are or how much you trust them, that information, even from the highest realms of illumined truth, is still being filtered through their consciousness. So the information that I'm sharing that, I've, uh, that the beings of light have given to me, I share with the caveat that this is food for thought and the information is never designed to tell us what we believe we is wrong. We've all been guided through our own I am presence, through exactly the learning experiences we needed, the religions, the cultures, the races, the nationalities, all of our experiences are part of our collective growth 
that has brought us to this point. And now this new information is being given to us to enhance what we already know. And what I encourage people about everything is to take it as food for thought. If it doesn't resonate with you, let it go. And I promise you, if it's something that you need to progress on your life path, your I am presence will keep presenting it over and over and over again until finally it resonates as truth. So it was a process for me. But the important thing to understand now is we don't have to go through the gamut of world religions and study everything about science to finally make the decision to go within. It's available to us right here and right now. And our God self, our I am presence, is standing in readiness to guide us directly and to open the floodgates of heaven so that we can communicate with all of the legions of light to guide us on this miraculous journey that we're on at this time. Yes. Uh, so, and boy, this is a time of a great convergence in the sense that this spiritual wisdom you're sharing is coming together also with a science has evolved. As you mentioned, it started out with this quackery, you know, of just randomness. Uh, but now you've got like the Resident Science Foundation uh, out of California, Nassim Harriman's work, and Bruce Lipton, a biologist, uh, Stanford, uh, was faculty at Stanford. Where, where they're saying we're, uh, the, they, they put science words to this. They say we're sovereign to one body. It's, it's exactly the same thing. Uh, we're sovereign to one body. And that when we, when we understand our design, then we understand how we're made. And we understand why serving the whole feels so good. It's because that's, <laughs> we're a part of that whole. Um, so um, also, just in what you're sharing, Patricia, you know, it feels like, you know, probably is too much to call it a new New Testament, but um, conversations with God also, just like your teachings here, is sharing, uh, take the wisdom within, feel into that wisdom, and then if it resonates, hold it deeply and take action, and if it doesn't, release it. Uh, so it seems that, that that is now the way that, we're, the, the God of the Old Testament is just way, way in the past of thou shall, you know, it, it's, it's more an empowering divine that's saying, here, you know, here's some uh, clarity. Here's some things you can do. Take it within. Uh, feel into this and, and then do act on it if, it, if you're going to hold it as your truth and discard it if you're, if you're not, which, which is kind of uh, nice because a lot of people, uh, even the word God, you know, is still, uh, some people have trouble with it because of the old authoritarian burn in hell, you know, notions that, right. that are... Uh, Aren't, aren't part of these these wisdom teachings at all. Uh, so one no, thing, Patricia, that, do... Oh, go ahead. Yeah, please, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that was all part of the manipulation to control and, you know, and, you know, giving everybody the benefit of the doubt. We were in a mess over the past, you know, centuries, and uh, the churches were... There was some of it that was uh, nefarious efforts, but much of it was just out of the frustration, what can we do to stop humanity from acting out so abhorrently? And so they said, well, we'll scare them to death. You know, we'll tell them that they're going to burn in hell forever if they don't stop doing those things. But we become who we believe we are. And so when we're told we're worthless sinners and the worms in the dust, it just perpetuates everything that we need to be correcting in order to move into a path of love. Yes. So, Patricia, just one thing. Do any of the, um, this wisdom, these beings in, these, in the heavenly realm that are uh, guiding you and your work, uh, are, do any of them ever, are, are they named ever? You know, you mentioned Jesus and Mother Mary in the early stages as you were reaching out. Do, are there, or is it just more of a conglomeration of higher wisdom that goes, that call themselves the beings of light from the realms of illumined truth? No, they absolutely have names, and we can call on them names, their names when they're revealed to us. But, you know, in the mystery schools, they, had, they, they were given very specific names. And like through the various traditions, the beings, like there's powerful beings of light, for instance, over 
the temple over Mount Fuji in Japan, there's a powerful force of the violet flame there. And the hierarchy is the being uh, named Kamakura and working with them is another being named Lord Sri Madra. And they're working specifically at cutting humanity free from all of the cords and entrapment of our fragmented and fear-based human ego. And those names are given to us at levels when we can resonate and understand them. Because of the fear-based consciousness, a lot of people are afraid of a name that they have not heard of. For instance, one of the magnificent overlighting presences for Jesus's mystery and his ministry was Lord Maitreya. And that is a magnificent being of light that brings forth Christ consciousness. But when that was brought to the fore, you know, and, and people tried to connect with it, people that were relating to Jesus felt it was a distraction, felt it was evil. So because of the urgency of the hour of awakening the mass consciousness of humanity, the beings of light said, and in many instances, we will come as the company of heaven or the beings of light from the realms of illumined truth. And all of those that can resonate at a heart level with specific names and guidance, the mighty Elohim all have names, there's solar logos that all have names that we can, they will be revealed. For instance, the solar logos from our physical sun, our Helios and Vesta, from our central sun, our Alpha and Omega, from our great central sun, a higher lineage, it's Eloe and Eloa, and from even the great, great central sun and even higher lineage of solar beings, it's El and Allah. And so those names are given to us, but to reach the masses at this time, we are being encouraged to present it in a very gentle and loving way, you know, that they can relate to as loving professors and teachers that have evolved before us. Yeah, boy, beautiful. So, um, okay, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about this. Uh, we've developed a free program and a, a master class with uh, Patricia Coda Robles and also Suzanne Giesman. Uh, but uh, before we talk about it, let me just share for people that don't know, Humanities Team, we're a 501c3 nonprofit. So, uh, and we're, so we're the largest uh, nonprofit in transformational education. Um, makes us a little different because we have nonprofit roots. So uh, one way to kind of look at this is when we grow up, we think of what is God doing or the divine doing to us. Uh, and then within our industry, where they're clearing houses of classes, uh, this next stepping stone of what is God doing for us is it gets a lot of focus where there's uh, attention drawn to how we can come into new subconscious uh, intentions and metaphysics and things where we're manifesting uh, for ourselves. Uh, we're going out to this other stepping stone of what is the divine doing through us? Uh, because the, the central teaching here is that we're all one. Uh, there is only one you know, one, one God, one divine, one cosmos, one galaxy, or galaxies, plural, uh, of which we're all a part. You know, and the scientists, again, are saying we're sovereign to one body, like it or not, you know, that's how you're designed. There's a whole, you know, and you're part of that whole, which, which actually I think is very empowering, you know. So they're puzzle pieces to the whole, and you're actually a puzzle piece in the whole, which, which I think is really very empowering. Now, um, of course, Coming back to this planet and where we are today, uh, everybody, I think, has, has there's, there's almost unanimity, unanimity that we need, to, we need to shift. Clearly, we need to do something different. The dysfunction and darkness and chaos and things in the world are substantial. There's a lot of hand-wringing, a lot of praying going on. You know, of gosh, what's going to happen to our kids and our kids' kids? Uh, and so we've been given guidance by uh, you know, the, these beings of light from Illumined Truth, uh, the, the Divine Herself, if you've read the Conversations with God series, a sacred text as well. Uh, so lots of guidance coming in. And the guidance is sharing, we can do this and we are doing this. This is what these programs are about that we created with Patricia and Suzanne. We can, 
we can journey into what we're calling this conscious future. Uh, it's this ascension that Patricia talks about where we're going up two levels from the thir third to the fifth dimension. We can do this and we are doing this. So as a nonprofit, this is 100% what it's about for us. It's about that vision, it's about that journey, it's about supporting people on that journey. We're saying uh, that the uh, download that we got is to make conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040, so in 18 years. So now, uh, and then central to that are these teachings. These are very important teachings here that Patricia and Suzanne are bringing in where we're lifting the veil, you know, because for most of us, uh, this notion of, a, of, of beings of light uh, uh, and partnering with them is, is a bit foreign. You know, there aren't that many of us that really have developed a competency or, or even, you know, a mastery in things like this. And it's important because otherwise we're just without a compass in a storm bobbing, you know, doing our best, which is kind of what's happening in today's world. But as we, Patricia and I were talking before we came on, but why do that? You know, there, there are these beings of light who, we're, I'm going to go back to Patricia, who, you know, shares so beautifully. They're here. That's why they're here. You know, they're offering guidance. They're, they're sharing, these are steps we can take. These, these, are, these are ways we can live our life. I'll uh, come over to you, Patricia. We can talk briefly, and then we're going to go to a clip here from your free program called Partnering with Universal Being. Okay, yes, and I want to just encourage everyone. Humanity's team is being divinely guided and is a critical factor in this outer world. You know, one of my favorite quotes from Buckminster Fuller is, in order to create or change a paradigm, you don't try to go in and fix what's broken. You create a new paradigm and make the old one obsolete. And that's exactly what Humanity's team is doing bringing in new kinds of consciousness that are going to make uh, global climate change and pollution obsolete, that's going to make hunger obsolete, that's going to make disease obsolete, the pain and suffering on earth obsolete, as we connect with our higher innate abilities within us and become our full divine potential. Yeah, thank you. Well, we're all, and, and Patricia's work is divinely guided, and there, there are many here. I'm, and, and by the way, viewers, you're, of course, here for a reason, <laughs> not just happen chance. You're here is when we talk about this glorious future, this ascension, this journey to conscious living. You know, guess how we do it? Through you. <laughs> That's why we're here, actually. Not for Patricia and I to gab, though I love Patricia and love gabbing with her. It's, <laughs> it's, it's to talk about all the things we can do together and we are doing together, you know, because we absolutely are, are making this happen now. The media is not covering it, but there are good things happening. Okay, let's go to a clip here from this uh, Partnering with Universal Beings. This is the free 60-minute program that Patricia and Suzanne and Humanities team created, and then Patricia and I are going to come back and talk about it. I think the most critical message coming forth from the heavenly realms is that they are trying to awaken within us the remembrance of our purpose and reason for being on earth at this time, that we have literally been preparing for lifetimes to be in this physical plane. And they have shared that every single purpose, every single person on this planet is here because we have been specifically selected. And that means every man, woman, and child to assist with the awakening and with the transformation of this planet back into her planet of light that she was in the beginning before our fall from grace. And so when people say, well, who am I in this overall scheme of things? It isn't that we're more evolved or more special. It's that because of our life experiences, the beings of light said our father, mother, God selected us and turned away other sons and daughters that were volunteering to be born because they felt that because of our life experiences, we had a better chance of staying focused on the light and coming from a place of love and our heart based God self in the face of all adversity knowing that in this outer world, 
the negativity, the human miscreations, the thing that we have miscreated by choosing to use our creative faculties of thought and feeling in ways that are not based in love. The negativity and the pain that resulted from that has to be pushed to the surface to be transmuted back into light. And then we will be able to co-create the heart-based patterns for the new world that we're talking about. And so the beings of light are empowering us to know that it is not a fluke that we are here. So that when we feel that we're not of value or that we don't have power, we don't have the ability to make a difference, that's simply not true. Okay, and that was just a teeny, teeny little bit of wisdom from a 60-minute program that's really just spectacular. Uh, it's brand new. We, we've just uh, recently did the second unveiling of this program, partnering with Universal Beings. We're going to put the, uh, the, the web address here so that you could sign up for a, the program. It's a free program. Uh, and there's so many wonderful teachings like this one that Patricia just shared. And I invite all of you viewers to click on that link, sign up for the free program. You can also just go to Humanities Team with a Y, humanitiesteam.org, and the very first thing you'll see when you go to the site is this is the uh, this free program that you can sign up for. So, um, boy, this was uh, really a, a wonderful. I mean, it was divinely guided. You and Suzanne both uh, are are just incredible faculty, bringing really different dimensions to this whole aspect of how we can be. Uh, connect how we can create a connection during these times, how we can be guided, uh, and then how we can receive support, and this the, and and not just be doing this bouncing thing in the ocean hoping for the best, but rather, you know, guided and supported along this journey to uh, to where where we, we we've dreamed about going, right, Patricia? Yes, and I just want to say Suzanne is wonderful. If you are not familiar with her, you'll love her. She has a wonderful sense of humor. She's connecting with wonderful beings of light and sharing information in different ways and different terminology. And that's what's so special about this moment, that if one person out there isn't sharing information in a way you can relate to, there's other people out there with different terminology and different ways of expressing things that will resonate with you. And Suzanne and I are are perfect examples of that, of the diversity and yet the oneness of the divine purpose that we're all returning to source. Yes, and boy, you're <clears throat> both just uh, very humble, but so terrific, really, spiritual teachers. Um, we've been able to talk a little bit about you, and for people that don't know, Suzanne Giesman, she was a naval commander, uh, and she was advising the Joint Chiefs of Staffs. You know, wow, I mean, talking about a senior position. This was around the 9-11 time frame. She was even on Air Force One flying with the president uh, on occasion. And when, when through a series of events, she uh, U-turned, you know, into the work that she's doing now. Uh, so it's, it's an incredible program, partnering with Universal Beings. And I invite you to check it out. The, uh, in about 10 days, then, there's a follow-on program for some who will uh, deeply resonate with this and who will want to understand how to be a medium so that they connect with these uh, beings of, of light uh, in the realm of illumined truth, uh, how they can partner with universal beings in order to bring that kind of wisdom into their home, into their workplace, ultimately into the world. This is part of this whole journey into conscious living where we really need to lift the veil now. It, uh, if, if we're going to go to where we want to go, uh, this was never intended to be a journey all by ourselves where we're just trying to figure it out. There, there are incredible uh, beings that are here guiding us. And you might even say a word uh, about that as you do during the program, Patricia. The, they, uh, these, uh, well, you mentioned actually that you go to the, you, you, uh, when you were talking a minute earlier, where you wanted to go to the very highest levels of, of uh, wisdom in the work that you're doing uh, and not lower levels of wisdom. Right. And, you know, I'd like to share one of the things that transformed my life and understanding about my mission. And I think it makes a big difference. One of the questions I get asked most often is, 
why in the world are the legions of light throughout infinity focused on this one little tiny planet that has made such a mess of things? And there is a very clear and logical explanation for that. And the, you know, in the creating a solar system, our Father, Mother, God breathe out the out breath all of the systems of worlds in the solar system. And that might be what our scientists perceived as the Big Bang. And then as we evolve over evolutionary time, the, our Father, Mother, God breathe the solar systems back into their heart flame. This is the in-breath and the out-breath of God. And these shifts, and I'm just going to talk about our particular solar system, because there's all different ages and all different solar systems. But in our particular solar system, the uh, shift of the ages that it's called is a moment in time. And we heard about and heard that terminology when we heard about harmonic convergence in 1987. That's actually when we had the very first World Congress on Illumination. And we were told there was this 25 year period and then we would move through the shift of the ages in 2012 to move forward. And there were all different kinds of interpretations and descriptions of how that would happen and how that would occur. But most of them were focusing on the 5,125 year completion of the Mayan calendar that that was over and that's what the shift of the ages is. But the beings of light said the shift of the ages is actually a moment in time that happens every so many millions of years. And at that time, all cycles within cycles within cycles throughout the whole of creation dovetail into the rhythmic momentum of our Father, Mother, God. That is when our Father, Mother, God inbreathe all creation up the spiral of evolution into the next octave of their learning experience. So we are talking about moving from the third dimension into the fifth dimension. And the reason for that is that millions of years ago, the cosmic edict came forth for the shift of the ages and our solar system was to be breathed forth from the third dimension into the fourth dimension. Now, what happens at that time, if there are any life streams, any souls that could not withstand that higher vibration, that would be like trying to move through a lightning bolt because the energy is so much higher, they are left behind. And these aren't souls that are just trying but making mistakes. This is for somebody to be left behind in the shift of the ages. It is heavy duty, dark energy like black magician deliberately opposing the light kind of energy. And the beings of light said at that time, the earth was the only planet for some reason in our solar system that had not experienced any misqualified energy. You know, our commandment, do not partake of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. That commandment meant for us not to experiment with our creative faculties of light and love, our thoughts and feelings. Do not experiment with our gift of life by creating patterns that are not based in love. And some, many of the souls in the other solar systems did, and they were going to be left behind. And the beings of light said that the evolutions of earth appealed to the heart of our central sun and asked if it would be possible for our sun, Helios and Vesta, to maintain us in the third dimension while we took on the laggard souls, as they were called, from our sisters and brothers and the other planets in our system and allowed them to be born on Earth so that we could raise them up because we hadn't experienced any of the negativity. Our Father Mother God said, never in all creation had that level of compassion and love been offered by the sons and daughters of God for their sisters and brothers. And since our purpose and reason for being is learning to become co-creators to create greater expressions of light and love, we were granted that particular experiment. Now, the problem is we've never experienced anything like the negativity they were going to be bringing with us. 
But when the cosmic moment arrived, the rest of the planets in our solar system ascended into the fourth dimension. Their souls that weren't going to make it were transferred to the inner planes of Earth and the Earth alone was maintained in the third dimension. These souls began being born through the sons and daughters of God on Earth on the continent of Lemuria, which is a big continent in the Pacific Ocean. And when they were young, we were able to transmute and handle their energy. But when they started having some of their heavy duty karmic liabilities released to them, it overwhelmed us and the earth evolutions got caught in that energy. That is what is actually the fall from grace. And over eons of time, the earth became so dense when we talk about the Neanderthal troglodyte consciousness of the caveman, the beings of light said that is not what we evolved from, that is what we fell to. And then we evolved from that after we fell into these depths. Our energy was so dense that it actually bent the axis of the earth. The earth fell off of the spiral of evolution and created what we've known as the trap of the wheel of karma. And for eons of time, the beings of light have been striving to awaken us and to help us. Nobody was willing to give up on us. All of the other planets in our system and all of the other solar systems as well, because we got in this mess out of the greatest act of compassion and divine love. So fast forward all of this time, and what harmonic convergence was in 1987, it was a 25-year period of grace that the beings of light said there would be a cosmic push to raise our vibration in that 25 years up the spiral of evolution into the fourth dimension so that we would be able to move forward in the light into the fifth dimension with the rest of our solar system. And what harmonic convergence was, it was very interesting what happened. This was pre-social media, pre-internet, all of that. Yet hundreds of thousands of people all over the world were getting this guidance from the beings of light in the realms, not connecting with each other, not learning it from other people. Some people were connecting, some groups were connecting. But we were asked at Era of Peace, we were asked to have the first World Congress on Illumination in Honolulu, Hawaii, which is the remnants of the continent of Lumuria, because that's where the initial impulse of the fall from grace took place. And so the light was going to pour in there and then be distributed throughout the Earth's crystal grid system. And light workers all over the world were guided to go to different sacred sites and have special meditations and things on those four days from August 15th, 16th, 17th, and 18th in 1987. And whether they knew it or not, what they were doing was forming as acupuncture needles along the Earth's meridians so that the light would come in through them. So the light came through Hawaii into the center of the earth, expanded through the crystal grid system and was anchored through the divinity and the heart flames of light workers around the world, anchored uh, as acupuncture needles. That light that came in was enough to raise the earth off of the wheel of karma and place us back on to the spiral of evolution. So the trap of the wheel of karma was broken at that time. And we began experiencing the initial impulses of the fourth dimension that accelerated through myriad activities of light for the next 25 years. And then during the solstice on October 25th, our 21st and 22nd in 2012, our planet, this was the initial impulse of the shift of the ages. Our planet aligned with the galactic core of the Milky Way and Mother Earth and our entire solar system 
were breathed up the spiral of evolution and the earth began experiencing the initial impulse of the fifth dimension. Now, this is a unique experiment that has never been attempted in any system of worlds, never has a planet that's fallen this to this depth been given an opportunity to move so quickly through two evolutionary shifts. So we are succeeding beyond the greatest expectations of heaven. And this is an important fact for us to know and to understand as to why we are all here from other time frames and dimensions volunteering to help and why we many of us are from some of the other planets that went forward in the fourth dimension millions of years ago and we took on their fallen souls, their sisters and brothers that were fallen. The whole of creation is focusing on us because when we succeed, we are taking our collective experience with us. And this unique experiment that has never been attempted for is being recorded in the halls of learning. We got in this mess because we had no concept of what it meant to begin experimenting with our gift of life in ways that were not based in love and we not and the fall and the horrific energy. So now that knowledge is available and the path to reverse that and return to the light back to our Father, Mother, God <clears throat> is going to be cope. Uh, recorded in all of the realms of knowledge in the heavenly realms. The beings of light said, because of this, we are creating a new octave of godhood and never again will the sons and daughters of God fall to the depths of pain and suffering that we have experienced because they will be able to learn our experience through the halls of learning so that they will not take that risk and take that chance again. And because of that, the whole of creation is focusing on this one tiny planet because the success of our mission, which we are God victoriously going to accomplish, is creating a new octave of Godhood. So never again will this depth of evil exist in creation. Boy, let's just uh, breathe into that here for a moment. That was uh, uh, extraordinary, just taking us through all of that, uh, Patricia. Thank you. Let's just, again, take a moment to kind of breathe into that. That was, there, that was uh, a big, big intake there, a very important intake. Uh, so let me, let me just share, there's lots of questions coming in. Thank you, viewers. Uh, we're going to get to these here uh, in a second. Let's just, uh, we're going to go to a clip. Now, I mentioned in about 10 days, there's this brand new masterclass launching for the very first time. It's, it's this one with Patricia Cota Robles and Suzanne Giesman. It's called Cosmic Forces Shaping a Whole New Future. Um, let's go to a clip of it, and then we'll talk a little bit about it, and then we're going to get to all of the questions that are coming in here. The information that I will be sharing in this master class is being given to humanity at this time by the cosmic forces I refer to as the company of heaven. These are our sisters and brothers, sons and daughters of God, just like you and me. The difference is that these beings of light have been around for much longer than we have been and they have evolved to a much higher level of consciousness. The company of heaven is comprised of selfless messengers of God that are like college professors compared to you and me, who are more like kindergarten students at this stage of our evolutionary process. When invited to do so, the company of heaven will intuitively communicate with us and share sacred knowledge from the realms of illumined truth that will assist us in our earthly sojourn. This intuitive sharing is accomplished through open heart and mind 
telepathic communication. The cosmic forces referred to in this master class consist first and foremost of the all-encompassing presence of our omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent Father, Mother, God, the cosmic I am, all that is. The heart of our Father, Mother, God is literally the core of creation from which every single atomic and subatomic particle and wave of life throughout the whole of creation is birthed. It is within the body of our Father, Mother, God that every single atomic and subatomic particle and wave of life throughout the whole of creation lives, moves, breathes, and has its being. The body of our Father Mother God is the divine matrix or the unified field that science is finally beginning to recognize. Okay, and that uh, again was just a little uh, excerpt from uh, this brand new masterclass. It starts in 10 days. It's called uh, Cosmic Forces Shaping a Whole New Future. Now, so, and there's a big cohort going through uh, Patricia, Suzanne, all of Humanity's team. Now, it actually is available right now on the Humanity Stream Plus platform. This is this revolutionary conscious streaming platform all coming out shortly in Spanish, French, German. Uh, we're going to just get it in every home on the planet. It's central to this whole strategy of making conscious living pervasive worldwide by 2040 uh, because this wisdom, uh, and there are other uh, incredible teachers, Michael Beckwith and Greg Braden and Bruce Lipton and Neil Donald Walsh, et cetera. Uh, the, the, you know, the mountaintop is the same, this whole Godhead mountaintop, but there are thousands of paths to the mountaintop. There are different ways that uh, people resonate with uh, coming to this understanding of unity consciousness or oneness uh, of, of 5D ascension. Uh, and and we, we are uh, intaking all of these best practices to the platform. We've already put 32 new programs on the platform this year alone in 2022. And Patricia, I was just checking this morning, there's a search feature and I was uh, typing in Patricia's name. She has 55 uh, programs there, segment of video teachings uh, on the platform at the present time. So Humanity Stream Plus, there's uh, we're a 501c3 nonprofit, so we have a one-for-one -one program too. When people subscribe, it's $3.99 a year, which is about the price of one masterclass. You gift a free subscription to an underserved, underprivileged individual somewhere in the world that couldn't afford the platform at any price. So, um, uh, and again, that's available today to people that are on the Humanity Stream uh, Plus platform. So, boy, what an uh, exciting masterclass uh, and just this whole... Um, uh, unveiling of the free program and of cosmic forces. Boy, uh, this is uh, such a gift re really to humanity right now. Um, Patricia, just the, the wisdom that you and uh, Suzanne are bringing to people to where, where they can become a medium themselves and learn how to become connected, guided and supported by these uh, universal beings. Yes, and that's, you know, the, the bottom line of all of the information and everything that's coming from the heavenly realms is to remind us that we don't have to learn all this stuff to become one with God. We are one with God. We are the ones that forgot that. We are the ones that fell into the depths and created the fragmented and fear-based uh, aspect of ourself known as our human ego. We've always been one with God. So the whole momentum of all of the teachings is to help us reverse the adverse effects of our fall from grace. And then in addition to that, we are co-creating the new earth, transmuting all of our human miscreations and transforming into the fifth dimensional crystalline aspects of the new earth. I'll just, you know, one of the people ask about the fifth dimension, I think this is really important to understand. When, when we go through a near-death experience, we talk about, I mean, people talk about, I've never had one, but people talk about passing through the dark tunnel into the octave of light. 
And what the dark tunnel is, is just the sea of our misqualified energy of hate and anger and war and everything around the planet that we're now in the process of transmuting. And when we go into the light, it's when we consider that we're in the heavenly realms and we see our loved ones and we see the beautiful experience. And in that dimension, our loved ones, no matter what condition their physical bodies were in when they left the earth, they are always vibrantly healthy. They're in their prime. There's this beautiful nature and all this experience of light and love. Nobody over there is struggling to make money to pay for a mortgage. You know, they're manifesting by utilizing the unformed primal light. And it's what we considered the heavenly realms. Well, this shift of the ages is that we are ascending that all creation is moving forward. So what we are moving into, into the fifth dimension, is what we've always thought of as the heavenly realms. And the heavenly realms have ascended into the sixth dimension. And of course, there's infinite dimensions above that. But for our purpose and our understanding, our loved ones are now vibrating in even higher, more rarefied frequencies of light known as the sixth dimension. And we're in the process, we're kind of with our feet in both worlds right now, but we're in the process of moving into what they were existing is the heavenly realms. And this is why all of the spiritual teachings talk about the new heaven and the new earth, and there'll be no pain and no disease and no such human miscreation like aging or hatred or war or poverty or hunger. All of those are human miscreations that we miscreated after the fall. So now we're in the process of reversing all of that, transmuting all of the energy. And the reason, you know, that we have to transmute it and can't just say cancel, cancel and eliminate the past is that we used our precious gift of life, our life force, our prana from God and took it into our heart flame and then misqualified it into this gross mutation of hate or war or anger that is now manifesting as poverty and disease. So we miscreated our gift of life and we are responsible for transmuting that precious life substance, those gross mutations back into light. This is what the purging is. This is what the tribulation is that they talked about in the Bible, you know, prior to the manifestation of the new heaven. But right now we're doing both at the same time. The negativity is surfacing as the light increases. It pushes everything to the surface that conflicts with it. We're transmuting that negativity, but we're simultaneously doing what humanity's team is doing and what Era of Peace is doing. And we are co-creating the patterns of perfection for the new earth by reminding us of who we already are and reminding us that everything we need, all the skill, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, courage, and strength we need to fulfill our divine plan is already existing and pulsating in our heart flame. Yeah, amen to that. So um, things, everything that's unhealed needs to come up for healing. I mean, it makes sense. It's challenging, of course, as we as we feel this energy in the world, but it's, it's the process. What's unhealed needs to come to the surface for healing. And then we uh, yeah. play our role, or as healers, as alchemists, this is what light beings mm -hmm. do, is we, we play mm -hmm. our role. Um, so now yes. I think we, we may be we answered. Knew. Yeah. Let me just say this one thing. We knew it was gonna be like this, and this is specifically why we were chosen, because it was believed by our Father, Mother, God, that we had the tenacity and the determination and the strength because of all of our past life experiences that we were going to be able to stay focused on the light in the face of this surfacing adversity. Yeah, so that's, that's our invitation here. Staying focused on the light <laughs> in, the, in amidst that's all right. of the uh, uncertainty, the darkness, the chaos, the dysfunction. So we want to stay, we want to do that. Um, so I think we maybe answered Linda Worth's question. She wanted to come on live. There are people in the green room with us to ask about the ascension to 5D taking place. Uh, she says, uh, well, this, is she still? She wants to, yeah, so let's bring her in. So Linda Worth wanted to come in. She had a question. It might be uh, even a little more on the 5D here that's taking place. 
So yeah. there, there you are, Linda. Hi, welcome to the program. Hi, Linda. Uh, first of all, thank you, Patricia, for being alive and doing the era of peace. I love it. It's it guides me all the time. And thank you, Steve, for putting all of this on. I I just joined Humanity Stream Plus, and I'm already jumping into it. Um, I've been searching for a long time, feeling I can feel the beings of light. I'm communicating with them. But the one question that nobody really answers is, okay, when we ascend to 5D, which I wish it was now because I'm ready, um, is it a transition to another planet? Is the new Earth another planet? Or is it another total existence? Or is it this planet? I mean, where are we physically when it happens? Okay, we're in the middle of that transition. And part of our time is in fifth dimension and part of it is in still smack dab in the middle of the purging mm -hmm. cleansing that's going on. So it's not going anywhere far. I mean, the earth is ascending into higher and higher uh, cosmic coordinates all the time as we raise our frequency of vibration but it is a frequency. So just as, for instance, in December of uh, 21st and 22nd in 2012, when we were breathed up the spiral through the fourth dimension and into the initial impulses of the fifth dimension, we experience now the two worlds as existing simultaneously. And nobody walked outside on the morning of the 23rd and said, oh, We've birthed a whole new earth. We're in a whole new place. That isn't the way this happens. It happens in increments and vibrations. So our body now, step by step, in fact, the beings of light said, we are being raised in frequency. We are, the elemental kingdom is, and the earth is, the maximum we can withstand in every 24-hour period. So it's a process of raising frequency. And the beings of light have even said, which is hard for us sometimes to fathom, if we saw our physical body the way it was prior to harmonic convergence and what it is now, they said our body would look now, would look ethereal compared to the <laughs> denseness of our body before these shifts. So it's a process we're experiencing and every morning of, I mean, every minute of every day the maximum that we can withstand. So it has to do with raising vibrations and frequency. Okay, thank and Linda, you. thank you for uh, coming on. Thanks for th thanks for coming on with us. We appreciate My it. My pleasure. Thank yeah, you. big hugs to you. All right, and uh, so now we're coming up here, uh, Patricia. I don't know. Do you do you have a couple more minutes? Or are you on a? I know you've got a very tight schedule, uh, and this was an hour program. No, I'm okay. Okay, I'm okay let's today. just go. There, there, there are lots of questions here, so I'll just get to a few more. Uh, so Joni says, "We, what drew you to Mother Mary? She says, I asked because I'm drawn to her as well. I even have a collection of, of the Virgin, one of which is Mary with the child. It's stunning. Uh, how, how did you connect with her? She, um, when I was a child, as I mentioned earlier, I was in some challenging times, sometimes very fearful. And there was always this magnificent feminine presence with me. And I knew I was going to be okay because she was there. And I knew I wasn't to tell her. And I'm talking about being like three or four years old. I knew I wasn't to tell anybody about her because they would be able to maybe make her go away. And then one day when I was like seven or eight years old, my neighborhood girlfriend invited me to go with her family to church. And it was a Catholic church here in Tucson. And I walked in the door and there was this magnificent presence of Mother Mary. And I knew that was my lady that came and was protecting me and taking care of me. So I, and she does that for all of us. I don't think I'm special and I don't think I'm unique. I was just gifted with the ability to be tangibly aware of her presence. She protects and sends her light to all of us all the time. Wow, beautiful. Yeah, thank you for sharing. I've done, I've, 
I traveled into parts of Mexico where I felt this, boy, just unbelievable uh, divine feminine energy of Mary, where their communities are just uh, really uh, hold that in a very special way. Um, and of course, this happens yeah. all over the world. Uh, so there are a number of questions. Uh, Patricia, you got to this earlier, but the fall from grace, you know, I think uh, that there, there are old connotations of that. And I think you're talking to something different here. Uh, there are people wanting to understand what, what in, in this context, what is the fall from grace? Okay, the fall from grace, I'm glad we've discussed that beginning part, is what happened when the laggard souls from other planets started being born on Earth, coming through the vehicles of the Earth evolution, when they were old enough to have some of their heavy-duty karmic liabilities and frequencies released to them, these heavy discordant energies started flowing into the planet and began overwhelming the evolutions of Earth. And we started experiencing pain and suffering for the first time. And we started responding to that through our free will choice in ways that were not based in love. So the fall of grace is when we made the free will choice, and I'll stress again, and that occurred out of the greatest act of compassion and divine love that the sons and daughters of God had ever expressed for our sisters and brothers. But the end result of that was that we began with our free will choice to use our creative faculties of thought and feeling in ways that were not based in love. The duality of God is not good and evil. It's not, that's a, dis, a very distorted perception when we believe that, that we have to have the darkness in order to have the light and that that's the balance of God. That means that as long as we have peace, we have to have war. As long as we have love, we have to have hate. As long as we have prosperity, we have to have poverty. The beings of light said that is the most inaccurate and destructive belief system we can have. The duality Anything that's not reflecting the he perfection of heaven on earth is a human miscreation that we've created. And the duality of God is not good and evil. The duality of God is the outbreath and the inbreath of God, the activity of breathing out into creation and the inbreath of breathing back into the source. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. Thank you for that. And um, I'll just take one more question here because um, we we're over we we're over about three minutes. So uh, it says, hello, I'm, I'm Truss. Uh, I must confess that I saw Jesus three times. He appeared to me in a very painful period. I then experienced a very gentle healing energy around me. Um, so that's, this is more of a statement than a question. But um, I would imagine this, uh, you, you've probably felt in, in, in your community, uh, there are people that talk about these kinds of things quite frequently, I would think, huh, Patricia? Absolutely. And the reality is, you know, people say all the time, well, why don't the masters just appear to us? Because then we would know they were real. And they've told us forever that there was a time when that experiment took place, when they would strive to manifest before us. And they do. And uh, those experiences are real and we need to realize them. But they said it is the least, because of our consciousness and our doubt in ourselves and our worthless sinner woman in the dust consciousness, it is the least effective way. They said it's a great expenditure of energy for them to lower the vibration to manifest. That's why, like when Mother Mary, there's an apparition when there's three children in the crowd of people, she has raised the vibration of the children to see her. But when she manifests for the whole group, she has to lower her vibration into that. And they're very conscientious about how they utilize their gift of light. And they said when they lower their vibration to manifest before us, for one thing, for the first five minutes, we're going, <gasps> you know, in, in shock that they're there. And then they, we don't even hear what they're saying at that time. And then as soon as they're gone, we're saying, oh, no, that's the way the light was shining on that curtain. That wasn't really... <laughs> really true right so they appear to us when we need it the most 
And if we can into, tune in to that intuitive inner guidance without the physical manifestations, which all of us have the ability to do, it's an infinite uh, saving and uh, conscious uh, preservation of our life force in higher frequencies. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Patricia. Uh, and thanks for staying over here about five minutes. So thank you, viewers. Thanks for being with us today. I promised you at the beginning, boy, you know, a great program in store and that it has been. Huh? So, uh, and up on social media channels, this uh, recording will remain. So you can come back and watch it again if you want here uh, later this week, this coming weekend. So, uh, but again, many thanks to all of you for being with us here for the hour. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. Next week, uh, Neil Donald Walsh is gonna be with me as our special guest, so be sure to tune in. And then later today, there's a special thing. Those of you that are part of this uh, revolutionary streaming platform, Humanity Stream Plus, we're starting at 4 p.m. Pacific today and every Wednesday, a program uh, for you all that's called The Next 12 Steps. And it's talking about this, uh, the 12 step process as a collective where we now go out into this world that Patricia and I are talking about, into into conscious living, into this 5D ascension, uh, into this glorious new world that we're all creating together. So join us, 4 p.m. Pacific today. Timothy Noah hope will be hosting that program. Okay, and I want to uh, just thank, uh, we can, uh, we're gonna draw the camera back so you can see the little studio here. It's our Humanities Team studio. There's me on the couch, there's Jim Gray, and he's our uh, director. Uh, I'll tell you, it's, uh, it, you have to be a brave person to do a live program. <laughs> where he's got me and Patricia and he's bringing in uh, guests and he's bringing in video clips and, and all of the chat from the, from the uh, social media. So Jim, thank you. And then uh, Karen Gordon, uh, D. Meyer, Nanette Kennedy, Garth Catterall. So Timothy Noah, thanks to all of my partners and colleagues that make this program possible. Linda, who's uh, Patricia's assistant, who was uh, very helpful in putting the program together. Thank you. Uh, so, and Patricia, look forward to be, being back with you again soon. You know, thank you for your great work in the world. Uh, by the way, as we close, um, you want to go to ArabPeace.org, this 36th Congress, World Congress on Illumination. What, what are the dates on that, Patricia, again? It's, uh, it's the 15th through the 20th. Uh, and uh, it, we're going to have a virtual free live hour in the morning so that people can tune in from all over the world. It's also a physical conference that's going to be in Santa Fe, New Mexico. But all the information is on the web. You can check okay, that out. Okay, that's 15th to the 20th of October. Is that right? Do I have that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So uh, be sure to check that out on arabpeace.org. Okay, and Godspeed with that. Patricia, thank you. Look forward to being back again with you soon. Uh, love and peace and blessings to all of you. Uh, thanks for being with us today.